Hello my beautiful students and welcome to my first screen class for, for Stats 3. Um, this is, if you are watching this video, then I have no doubt that you have found Blackboard. So I don't need to explain to you how to find Blackboard. And this is just going to be a little bit of an introductory session or screencast to show you around Blackboard. So how to navigate the learner management system, which is going to become your new favorite toy in my class. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to log into Blackboard. So you would have gotten your password from the IT center. And so you use your username, which is your student number. In your case, it's your student number. And then everyone would have their own individual password. And Bob's your uncle. Here we go. Um, the One of the things that you can do is if you want to, you can personalize your profile. So on top, on the top right hand side, you'll see your name will be there. Um, it really is like, uh, works like a Facebook thing. There'll be some messages there. If there's any new things for, that needs your attention, if you want to, you can put a little picture there. If it makes you happy, um, you, can, you can knock yourself out. You can play around there if you want to. The, the, what I'd like to get right into is how we're going to use it for our classes. So, on, also on the right hand side, there's your activities. So, your, 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 the, the courses that you are enrolled in will pop up here. And as you can see, I've got quite a few that I'm involved in. Um, and I'm going to find our course, which is Statistical Quality Techniques. And it's a part-time class in 2019. And so, I click on there to go right into our class. Okay, so now I'm into our class and the landing page is known as your home page. So the first thing that is important to us with the home page is your announcements. Now, at present, um, on the in this video, you'll see there's no course announcements. But after I make this video, I'm going to post it as an announcement. So if you are watching this video, you will find that there's an announcement there where I'm welcoming you and I'm giving you a link to the screencast video. Uh, the first important thing that I want to tell you about announcements specifically is it is a very good idea for you to change your announcements so that you can see announcements for at least the past 30 days. This is because um, as, as a default, I think, I think as a default, the announcements are set to the last seven days. Now, I, I literally expect you to log in to Blackboard definitely more than four times a week. Um, in an ideal world, I'd like you to log in once a day. That is what I would really like to see you do, and I think most of you will. Um, but when I make announcements, sometimes you want to find information and sometimes I attach documents to announcements and it's it's really easier to find if it's been the last seven, uh, sorry, the last, it's difficult to find if it's been the last seven days and, it, and it's maybe an announcement I made two weeks ago and, I, and I've given you a su support document and then you can't find it and you need to change things and so I just recommend uh, change, change the setting to the last seven 30 days it's completely useless to change it to just today and I think it's overkill to change it to also the last 30 days is what my, I'd recommend for, that all of us do. The other really really nifty useful thing about the home page is what needs attention now, at the moment and on what is new in fact this is the mo most important thing that what is new now when you open Blackboard and you use it for the first time, you'll find that there's a bunch of stuff that will be under what is new. And on the side of it, um, you'd be able to click, there'll be a little drop-down arrow here. And if you click on the drop-down arrow that looks similar to this, but it will obviously be under what is new, then you could say dismiss all if there is something to dismiss. Like, for example, here's a test overdue. You could go dismiss all. Now, the test overdue is probably an old test. I don't know why I've got that alert. But that is the way that you do it. That's how you clear it. And then once you've cleared, now, now because this is a new course for, for, for use, um, everything will be new. So you'll have lots of notifications here. So I recommend that you clear those notifications. And so when you log into Blackboard again, um, if, if I've made any changes, if there is a new discussion, if there is new content, if there is a new assignment or an assessment, then you'd be able to quickly see it in the What's New screen.
There's a couple of other things that you can play around with, like a to-do thing. Um, my toss, you can set toss for yourself if that makes you happy. Um, this is also linked to your calendar, um, and there's nothing due today. And now, let me uh, show you the calendar. So, the calendar is something that, I, it's a calendar that I've populated for us already. And to get to the calendar, so that's the home page, to get to the calendar, um, my my control panel is on my left hand side to get to the calendar i'll go to i'll click on the calendar um option on my control palette pa panel and in the calendar you'll see i've populated all the lessons that we're going to be doing so from the six we're starting with lesson one um, and that's welcome to stats three lesson two etc 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 um i've gone as far as populating right until the end of our course you'll see that a tentative date for our midterm assessment has already been set for the 20th of march just a tentative date at two o'clock and that will be an online assessment and we'll take that in the it center midterm break is until the 2nd of april when we commence with lesson seven on the 3rd of april um, there's a public holiday on the 1st of May, but I expect you to be working on your projects. And that is also the date that your draft project is due for lecture, the final date, let me put it, for lecture of feedback. Your project, your final project is due on the 8th of May when we'll have a projects class, but I'll explain that again in class, in personally in class. We have a study week from the 13th to the 17th of May, and then our assessment period starts. Your Tentative date for your final stats exam is on the 27th of May um, and the assessment period continues until the 7th of June and we have special exams after that in um, the, the last week before I think uh, the, the term ends, the second semester ends around about the 15th, 14th of, of um, June. Okay, so... Excuse me, my computer, my PC is moaning at me and telling me that I have to charge. So just give me a second, please, guys. I'll be right back. Okie dokie. So that's our calendar. The other thing that's really cool about the calendar is if you're a bit of a calendar freak like I am, then you'll probably find this really useful. You can get an external link for your calendar and you can use that to sync your calendar with Outlook or with Google Calendar. It's, I, I'm a bit crazy about calendars, so if it's not in my calendar, then it's not happening. Um, and if you, like me, find that extremely useful, then you can do that as well. Okay, so let's go on. So we've dealt with the home page. We have dealt with the calendar. Let's have a look at what's in our content page. So our content page is the, the body, the body of Blackboard. So in the content page, you'll see there's a couple of folders. Um, these folders are also known as learning modules. So each of these learning modules is like a book. Um, and everything that you need for a particular topic, you would find in that book for that particular subject matter. Or I've called it a study unit. So, study units, these are content. So, these are topics that we're going to cover in class. Now, you'll see the study unit 1 to 5. So, there's going to be five broad topics that we will cover in class, which I'll speak about in class in greater detail. And some of the study units have one lessons or one lesson or two lessons. Um, the, the last study unit has got three lessons. That's the, the largest study unit. And basically the study units are arranged that way just because they're logical. It's logical groupings to put them in. Study unit five, for example, if I were to open that, you'll see it's all about control charting. But there's, there are many different types of control charting. And I, I just put them all in the same study unit because they all are control charts, even though it's variables, attribute we, you will go we'll go through we'll get to there eventually um right so besides the topics the study units which is the topics we're going to cover you'll see that i've also created learn and mod learning modules for other items so the one item that i've also created a learning module for is feedback there's an introduction unit which is what i'll deal with in my first class there's a learning module for your project and then there's also a learning module that I've created for open source ebooks because there's lots of 
uh, free ebooks that's out there and whenever I find something useful then I add it to this and if any of you have any useful ebooks then we can create sort of a library sharing is caring it's really nice to be nice to everyone else okay so let me first tell you about the feedback now in my first lesson I'm going to tell you that one of the golden rules in my um, classes is I would like feedback the, the most important rule in my class is to use blackboard and a lot and I don't mean a lot I mean a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot but the second most important rule in my class is you need to give me feedback please I kindly request that you give me feedback on all of my lessons and to give me feedback on all of my lessons you would click on this learning module and if you click on that learning module Actually, I clicked too fast now and it took me immediately to the slide. But let's go back there. If you click on that uh, learning module, it will take you to a um, to the book. I, I, I sort of explained that the learning module is like a book. So if you open up that learning module named Feedback, then you'll see there are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pages which you see down here and if you look on top here you'll see this is page one of eight so the, the first page is that that you see on the right hand side here so that is page eight and this will take you to feedback to the very first lesson so feedback on lesson one perito and you click to launch and it opens up a new tab which is where the which opened up earlier let me actually just close that there it's going to take you to a, a Google form and in the Google form I ask you basically what you thought about my lessons um, and please, please, please my beautiful students, it's really, really important for me to get your feedback. We're all in the business of quality management and we all know how important customer feedback is. I really need to know what it is that I'm not nailing, that I'm not doing well. I really need to know what it is that I am doing well so that I can service you better, that I can support you best. Okay, so that is the learning module on feedback. Now, if I want to go back to the main content page, I can either, there's a couple of ways to skin a cat. I can either go, you follow my breadcrumbs. So you'll see on top here, you'll have breadcrumbs. Or you can use, on the left hand side, you can use the control panel again. So let's just follow my breadcrumbs and I'm going back to the contents page. And so I know what feedback is about and now let's see what the introduction unit is about. So I open up the introduction unit and just like the feedback, it opens up like a book. But this part of the book has got one of 21 pages. For each one of these pages, you can see, you can navigate easily. Now there is a way to actually make this bigger, but I, my computer is going to give me grief now. So I'm not going to... Yeah, there we go. That's how you make that bigger. So easier for us to read okay so or if you really want to you can actually open it up like that okay so so this is in in this particular learning module which is introduction unit there's a couple of topics so there's institutional matters and in institutional matters I have put the CPUT rules and regulations which every CPUT student should familiarize themselves with I've also got term dates and an institutional calendar then I've got things that's specific to the BTEC quality program so um, I've got the program guide which our BTEC students should familiarize themselves with our BTEC timetable my subject study guide and my first introduction lesson and then I've got a cute video clip for you so YouTube video clip for you to watch there's a couple of recommended textbooks and all that information you'll find here there's a calculator usage guide there's extra reading material and there's something called social responsibility which we'll also speak about in our first class um, and so to go to any of these topics very quickly you could say for example if you wanted to see our subject guide I could click on the subject guide and it will take me straight to the subject guide or if I wanted to see if I'm on the subject guide and I actually wanted to see the introduction lesson I could either click on introduction lesson here or I could navigate using the page view so this is page, the, the subject guide is page 7. So if you actually count, you'll see it's page 7 here. And the introductory lesson is on page 8. So I could just click on that arrow and it will take me to page 8. If I want to open 
the subject guide or if I wanted to open the introductory lesson, then I would click on the thing that said the highlighted text here, which is like a hyperlink and it's going to open up, um, it's actually going to open up the PowerPoint presentation which is the, the lesson, the first lesson that we'll be doing. So you can open it or you can save it. Oh, let's just open it. But my PC takes a while, so actually no. Yeah, it will come up later. Okay, so Bob's your uncle. Yes, let's just close that. So Bob's your uncle and this is my introductory lesson. So now we can go back and we can do the very same for the subject guide. Um, let's click on the subject guide. And that's a PDF and that will open on the web. Yeah, and so there you'll have your subject guide. To go back to Blackboard, you just go click on the tab where Blackboard was open. So I'm going to open, I'm going to close all of these things. I'm going to close the, the feedback form. I'm going to close the subject guide. Uh, this is the rules and regulations. I'm going to close that as well. And let's just close that new tab. I'm not sure what that new tab is about. Okay. Um, right, so that is the introduction unit. Now we can continue. Basically, the principle is the same for the rest of the, the study units or the learning modules. So let's go back to the content. Right, there we go, there we go. Now, each of these study units have a very, very similar uh, setup. Or layout rather um, and each in each of the the study units so for this one study unit one deals with Pareto the first thing on page one of all of the study units would be something called learning outcomes but to actually go to the learning outcomes you go to the second page which would be page 2 of 17 and basically those are key questions that you need to be able to answer to say that you understand the, the content or the topic that is covered by a particular study unit. And I've got that for each and every one of the topics that we're going to deal with. So that is learning outcomes. The next thing that you'll see in each of these study units, and they all look the same, they all have the same structure. The next thing that you're going to see is your lesson. So there might be one lesson, there might be two lessons. So here's a lesson for study unit. Let's, let's have a look at what that looks like. There's a lesson for Pareto. Um, the, the, my PowerPoint slides. There's two PowerPoint slides there. So here's one called study unit 1.1, which is Pareto. And you can download that and you can save that on your personal computer. Or you can, if you want to, you can follow it in class. You can follow it directly in class. There's also support material. So if I have any extra support material. Now in the case of Pareto, I actually made screencasts. Um... So, here are two screencasts, as you will see, but Bronwyn OER, Perito Analysis 1 and 2. The, these are extra things that I've gathered along the way, and I've just put it in a place where you could find it, and it's maybe going to be useful. I hope it's going to be useful for you as you go along the course. Um, that you will find in your content section as well. And if there's any extra reading material, I've also put that there for you. There's a revision exercises is the next thing and then discussions, but I will discuss the discussion board later, a little bit later. The assessments for a particular topic will also be, it will be under the discussion for each of these study units and web links if I have got any interesting web links to give to you. And then another thing is in case you did not want to use the specific learning module for feedback, there's a Click, you can click on there to give me feedback on a particular topic as well. So again, there's a couple of ways to skin a cat. And so I'm not going to go through all of them. I just want to show you one more, just to show you that the study units look identical. So this is study unit two. And just like study unit one, you'll see it's got learning outcomes. It's got the content. It's got the extra reading material. It's got revision exercises. It's got a link to the discussion board. It's got assessments and there's web links as well. Okay, the next study learning module that I, I want to discuss with you. So, so then there are the, the, the topics, so the five topic areas. So those are all 
from study unit 1 until study unit 5. The last one, and it's a very important one, is your projects learning module. So if you click on your projects learning module, everything that you are going to need to do your project is in this learning module. And this book or learning module consists of eight pages. And at your own time, I'm going to go through it in class, but at your own time, it would be good if you familiarize yourself with everything that is in here. The, the what I'd like to tell you about next is the discussion. So as you, you noticed is in each of these learning models, you can actually click there and it's going to take you to a, you're going to, you can click on something called discussion and it's going to take you to a discussion board. Uh, yeah, it says open up the discussion. Yeah, if it doesn't open up immediately. What it really did, now that is one way to get to the discussion board. What that, by clicking on that, took me to this discussion board which is uh, questions about the project. Another way to get to the same discussion board is in your control panel on your left hand side, you can click on discussions. And if you click on discussions, you will find that I've created threads and forums. Well, forums and within each forum, there, there might be one or two threads um, you can create. I've, I've allowed, I've, I've uh, made the setting so that the students can create their own threads as well within a particular forum. Um, so if you want to create a new thread, um, you would say create a thread over there. Students can do that, um, but you need to create the thread in the appropriate forum. So let's just go back to the discussion board and see what the forums are about. The forums are basically the general topics. So there'd be a forum for each of the, the, the study units. So the, the, there's a study unit called Pareto Analysis. There's a, there's a forum for Pareto, Pareto Analysis. And if you want to discuss something with your colleagues, and we're going, to use, we're going to use this discussion board a lot. We really, it's going to be our chief, our primary way of communication in my stats class. Um, if you want to speak about something on Pareto, you would go into the Pareto Analysis Forum. Um, there's something called, there's a thread already created called the Pareto Principle. If you want to say something about the Pareto Principle, you'd go into that thread. And then I've asked a question and, and I'm asking what is the principle on which Pareto analysis is based on. And I link it to a slide there and you can reply to me. If there's a couple of people that have replied to me, but you want to reply to someone that has said something earlier on and you want to highlight that that's the person you're replying to, then you would then you would use the quote function. But if you just want to reply to the person, the last person on the thread, then you, ju you just press um, reply. Um, and if it's not, if it is about Pareto for argument's sake, um, it is about Pareto, but it's not the Pareto principle that you want to talk about. It is uh, how to identify Pareto, then you create a thread. And logically, we've got to use, we've got to help each other um, use a bit of um, common sense here and, and, and name the thread that you create um, after whatever it is that you're speaking about so that people can find you, find what you've had to say and people can reply in the appropriate place. I'm going to be really, really strict about keeping the discussion board clean. It is a valuable, valuable tool. When you are stuck um, and you don't know you, you in the middle of the night and you think everyone else is sleeping, you might just find the information that you need because I guarantee you if one of you, if you, whatever one student is thinking, there's always 10 other students in the class that's thinking the same thing. Okay, I'm not going to belabor this point. The other nice thing about the discussion board is you can see if there are any new um, replies. So unread replies to me, if there's any new publications, there's nothing happening there at the moment. But th what I really, really love about the discussion board is I can very quickly see if there's anything new going on because these little highlighted, the, this, this that's highlighted in red, if there's one or two people that have said something, then it'll come up as one or two people and I'll quickly be able to see what needs my attention. Some of the other cool threads and forums that we have is, for example, lift clubs. Um, I, I have no problem with using uh, uh, the students using it for things like lift clubs. And there might be one or other two things that, that you could think of that, that the discussion board um, could be particularly useful or of value to us for. 
Okay, um, the other thing that is going to be important to use is groups. For projects, you will sign up to a group. Um, we'll, I'll discuss that in the first class, but it's just good for you to know where to find the sign-up sheet for the groups. To find the sign-up sheet for the groups, you would click on groups and you would sign up to a particular group. But we'll speak about that in our first class. Um, tools is a nice way of finding a lot of stuff quickly. So, so groups is in tools. Um, discussion board, I think, is also in tools. There's the discussion board in tools. Um, if you want to send an email, there's, there's a couple of things you can play around with there. I don't think your content section is in tools, but you know how to find a content section. Other thing that you're going to find very useful is your grades. So you can go to see your grades either using this left um, control panel menu or in the tools. I don't know. I just go straight to there. That would be my preference. And if you have any grades or grading activity, if there's any test that Bronwyn has set, then, then you'll see it here. Um, what else is there for me to show you? Uh, well, there's other things here. Uh, library, you can, you can have a look at that. There's some multilingual glossaries. Um, your class timetable. Well, I've got your timetable in your content section. And so that is basically, I think, the crash course on Blackboard. Um, I think the, the best thing to do with Blackboard is just get started and have fun. Blackboard really is going to be your best friend. I hope it's also going to be your favorite toy for the next two years while you're doing your BTEC quality. And I am really, really looking forward to having fun with all of you guys. Okay, I will see you on Wednesday. Later, alligators.